Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody, and welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend uh, update show. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable, beautiful, relaxing, glorious, fantastic, whatever you want to use, uh, Memorial Day weekend. Again, I can't emphasize how important it is to have that extra day off to kind of recharge the batteries, um, kind of center yourself and really get your thoughts together. Um, to kind of what you want to accomplish for the up and coming week. And again, this business is so mentally intense that if you let this business consume you, and again, I've been, um, you know, in no shape or form ever uh, hiding the fact how really mind bending uh, this business can be. It's very, very important to enjoy holiday time, enjoy your family, enjoy your friends. Uh, and again, just be a better friend to yourself again have that me time right it's not selfish so you know it's all about family it's all about your kids it's all about everything right but you need that me time and it was it, it's such a i was having such a relaxing weekend and i woke up uh today monday monday morning and i totally forgot i didn't even record the video so um getting that out of the way and then going back to uh, the holiday, uh, holiday um, long uh, uh, weekend. So uh, first and foremost, I, I want to thank every service person who ever served our great country, our great military, uh, current vets, uh, you know, everybody that's protecting our way of life. Okay. I, I can't um, emphasize enough how thankful everybody should be um, in paying tribute um, to every single service person who uh, has committed uh, their lives to protecting our rights, protecting our lifestyle. So we want to uh, definitely acknowledge them and say thank you uh, very much. So uh, let's get into the update, right, guys? Let's get into the update, and then we will uh, resume, right? Resume our Memorial Day weekend. So uh, first and foremost, uh, again, when I do these updates, uh, although I, I am not, uh, I, I'm not one of these uh, traders who believes that, well, if it's my way, if it's not my way, it's the highway. I, you know, look, there's a million ways to trade, okay? I don't care what type of trader you are, um, whatever you decide to pursue, okay? If you want to trade bonds, go trade bonds. It doesn't have to be with me. If you want to trade options, plenty of great option, uh, plenty of great option people <clears throat> that can show you the way, will show you how to get from point A to point B, and along the way, you could develop your own lifestyle. So it doesn't make a difference what path you choose. And when you're a new trader, you, you're, you're almost like, speaking of options, kind of a, almost a segue to it. When you're a new trader, a brand new trader, um, you're kind of a call option that, ex that has a weekly expiration, okay? You're fighting time. Think about, the, you know, think about this logically. When you're a new trader, you're fighting time, okay? You have an expiration date. Your job within that expiration date, and obviously every trader could be different. If you don't figure out this business, it could be a year, two years, three years. People prolong it without uh, really getting any, any type of success four or five years. Again, I've seen that happen as well. But your job as a new trader is to fight time, okay? To basically consume as much good information possible that you can be profitable before you your weekly option expiration title expires, okay? And you become worthless, just assuming um, you don't take any of the proper steps. And the one thing that I, I, I will tell new traders, and I try to give a, you know, a little bit of advice every single update to new traders, is you might not have the ability to curb your emotions yet, because that takes a lot of time. Uh, you might not have the ability to have an ironclad process that you can find consistency over and over again uh, right in the beginning, and that's fine as well. Uh, and there's a lot of things, the money management aspect as well, but the one thing you can control is your hard work, okay? And hard work beats talent every single day, okay? Every single day of the week, including uh, Sundays. And the one thing, one bad thing that I've been seeing on social media for years is that whole theory of, well, you can trade an hour, two hours of the day, make your money, and then go on with your day, right? Go on with your day, it's a perfect world, a perfect scenario. 
there is some truth to that. Okay, there is some truth to that because again, if you watch these updates for a long time now, you know that the meat of potatoes uh, of my day, I'm probably done with 90, 95% of the day by around, by around one o'clock, right? Between 1230 and one o'clock after that last uh, lunchtime candle, I'm pretty much done with my day. So there is truth to that. The problem is it took me many, many years to figure out where the, the sweet spot was. And the one thing that I keep on seeing over and over again is the new trader who's been trading a year, year and a half, two years, say to themselves, well, I just made $200, I'm done for the day, I made my goal, blah, 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 blah. Number one, that's a ridiculous way of looking at the market. Number two, you're missing out on something that I've been emphasizing for years, and that's called screen time, okay? You might not be the most talented trader in the world or the most fully funded trader in the world. Again, if you've been watching these updates, you know how important that is, at least in my opinion. Uh, but what you can do is control how many hours you prepare and how many times of the day you sit there and really concentrate on screen time. Screen time is free, guys. Okay, it doesn't cost you any money. There's seven hours of the day. Okay, that means that's 35 hours for the week. That is 140 hours uh, for the month. And ready? Da, 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 da. And I wrote this down. Don't think I'm that smart. Uh, there's roughly about 1,680 uh, hours for, for the month, right? That's 1,680 hours. You don't get those hours back, okay? If you leave your desk after the first hour, hour and a half, you don't get that hours back, okay? Screen time is essential for your development, okay? And if you're one of these traders who, who come in and you make some money, blah, 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 blah. And again, if you have consistency, if you can make money that, like, like every single day, you make money every single for the first time, God bless, okay? This does, then that doesn't apply to you, turn off this video. But if you're a trader and you're still trying to find yourself and you don't know what type of trader you want to be, you want to be a swing trader, options play, trader, you want to trade E-minis, e e you want to trade pivots with beta, whatever, whatever type of trader you want to be, you still have to find yourself. Who am I? What, what's my personality? What's my lifestyle? What's my work schedule? What is my, um, you know, what's my pain threshold? How is my size of my account affecting my decisions to be a certain type of trader? So all these things, the answers to that are during the day. And the seven hours during the day are really building a lot of building blocks to you subconsciously that you don't really appreciate if you leave, okay? You can sit there literally for four, five, six, seven hours a day and accomplish a lot of things. Number one, you could figure out the organic structure of the market, okay? Organic structure of the market is very, very important. I don't care how, how good of a trader you think you are, okay? You have to know why the stock market or why trades or whatever you want to you call it, you, you have to figure out why stocks move when they do, when they don't, okay? Where's the imbalances? Where's the arbitrage? Where's the level of aggression? Where's the level of uh, contraction? All these things, order flow, people ask me all the time, do you use level two? I, I, I never heard of that. How do you trade without level two? Doesn't every platform have level two? Like, how do you not? So all these things that people are trying to figure out, right? This is all part of the market structure. Okay, you have to sit there all day, okay, all day, at least in the beginning, and absorb as much information as possible in the market. So when I'm sitting there and I, and in the middle of a trade and, and I turn around, I go, hey, guys, there's a reload seller in the crowd. The guy's not moving. The guy's not moving. He's not out of the way. He keeps on reloading. He's not getting out of the way. This wasn't an accident. Okay, I could spot a reload seller, reload buyer at the top of the bottom of the range very, very quickly in the first minute. And that's the difference between having a break-even trade or slippage, right? Break-even trade or slippage or having a really, really bad trade because you didn't recognize there was a, an aggressive motivated buyer or seller in, in your trade. And that's very, very important. You don't just wake up one day understanding that information, okay? You have to sit there and watch order flow. You have to watch sometimes, uh, the most important thing, you have to watch the tendencies of your trades, even if you are not actively participating in them, because you don't get that, you, you don't get that time back, okay? You don't get all these hours of the month back. So when we're talking about that you are essentially a weekly option that is about to expire worthless, right? As a new trader, don't you think you, you should put yourself in a position? And again, it's not going to cost you any money. For you sitting there, putting your behind in the chair, watching order flow, watching market structure for seven hours a day, for, you know, for, for the first year or so, it's not going to cost you any money. But what's that going to do is it's enabling you to process all the information, well, maybe not all, but as much information as possible as the market has uh, to offer you. And 
at that point, at least it's building mental equity, okay? You, you don't get any of that if you're trading for the first 30 minutes of the day on your iPhone, which again is the most ridiculous thing ever. But, you know, you don't get that information. You don't, you know, you don't build, get those building blocks by leaving at, you know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning and then you're down for the day, okay? You're, you're still in a very, very impressionable stage. When you're trading a year, two years, three years, you're a novice, okay? Let's just be honest. You're a novice. You haven't seen a bear market. You haven't seen, uh, you know, you really haven't seen a bear market for a long period of time, okay? Let's be honest, okay? You haven't seen any, you know, any functional political disaster, financial disaster, you know, anything that, that, that could derail your trading. So wouldn't you think it would be valuable for you to put as much time and emphasis into this business, right? It's again, all these things are not going to cost you money. What they're doing is it's putting you in a position that you're extending, okay, your shelf life. Okay, there's nothing that you can do that's giving you more information that's going to curb your, you know, curb your your potential for longevity. It's only helping you. And you know, and and again, I, I see all these traders all the time talking about. You know, they're doing their, you know, they're doing their homework when they wake up in the morning and look at the pre-market high list. Okay, your research starts way before that, okay, the night before, even if you don't know what you're looking at, okay, and, I, and I've said this many, many times, even if you don't know what you're looking at, every trader every night, especially new traders, should be looking at 500 charts a night, every, every trade. There's absolutely no reason that you can't sit and allocate an hour a day, 45 minutes a day, at looking at charts. Even if you don't know what the hell you're looking at and why the stocks are moving when they're doing, eventually it's all going to sink in. All you need to do is back test, right? Every single day back test. Like you just turn around and you say, well, wait a minute. Even if I don't know what I'm looking at, well, if this if if this chart, right? The, this is a uh, uh, the diamonds. If this candle had hit this area, right? And Dan keeps on saying stocks trade from demand to demand and supply to supply. Well, what happened, right? Look, what happened when this candle got confirmed, right? It went lower, hit another demand zone. What happened when this candle got confirmed? Went lower, hit another demand zone. So even if you don't know what you're looking at, subconsciously, you can just start looking at random areas of the charts, and eventually you'll get that, oh my God, aha moment. I understand why the next day the stock did what it did. I understand why the next day the stock rested after a big move. I understand why the stock did nothing, because wait a minute, the next, the previous day, it hit a supply zone. So all these things are important, okay? These are all things that you're doing to establish a new foundation, establish and process some good information and extending your shelf life. Because if you're not putting in the work, okay, and you think your overall development starts at the pre-market high list, okay, you will be the epitome of what a week, uh, you know, weekly uh, option is, okay? And you're gonna expire worthless. Again, these are areas of the market, and these are areas of development that you don't need to spend money on to find out. These are all free to you, okay? All you have to do is open up an account, open up a chart, right? Open up a chart and look at natural order flow, okay? Look at a bunch of charts and eventually you will have that aha moment. Again, without work, without putting in the proper channels, without putting in the, the, the necessary foundation to extend your shelf life, you're going to be a statistic. And again, I want you to win, okay? If you're a new trader and you're watching, you're allocating some time this weekend or every weekend to watching my videos, I want you to win. But again, I'm not gonna sugarcoat your journey, okay? It's not going to be a straight line. There's gonna be a lot of a lot of days that you're gonna wake up in the morning and you're gonna say, well, what's the point? And you're gonna take, tell yourself every single day, I wanna quit, I wanna quit, I wanna quit. There's no reason to say that because again, all you need to do is take a step back, relax, and start putting in the work, and results will follow. So hopefully you guys will listen to my words. And just again, I'm trying to give it little tidbits every single week uh, to put yourself in the right position. Again, you don't need to trade me. It doesn't make a difference. If you don't, if you don't trade high beta and you don't trade pivots, that's fine. That, 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 that's okay. Find who you are. Understand who you are. Understand your lifestyle. Understand your, your, your financial uh, your financial surroundings and put yourself in a position to win. But again, there's no uh, there's no understating how important hard work is. So let's talk about the markets, right, guys? Uh, again, one of the greatest things uh, about YouTube, right? About YouTube or um, you know just just documenting things um, on video, and you can just really follow. Uh, you can follow the journeys, follow the market uh, in, in 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 stages 
and really put yourself in a position to really start understanding how things play out. And last weekend, uh, we started talking about how the market, you know, put in two days in a row of, when I say the market, the queues, uh, I'm referring to the queues here, uh, two days in a row of getting rejected off supply. You can see here, here's the first rejection, here's the second rejection, the second one, uh, was an inverted hammer. So if you know what a hammer is, right, it's bullish. So well, inverted hammer uh, is bearish. And again, second week, well, not even second week. We have, I think we have the fifth week in a row for the Dow uh, that had losses. Uh, the NASDAQ, again, gave back uh, over 2% this weekend, uh, this week. Uh, again, it's China tensions. It's just a headline now. Now it's, you know, it's starting to get, I, I believe it's starting to get a little more numb, a little more numb. People are starting to really embrace it uh, on a weekly basis. We really didn't have those massive knee-jerk reactions last week. Uh, there was, so there were less than the previous week, which were less than the previous week prior to that. So I think traders are starting to trade uh, much more off technicals than just uh, headlines. And you, you know, the one thing that if, if, you're, if you're a bull, okay, you, you can't like what you're seeing. Although again, if you look, if you stretch out this chart and you go on a weekly, there's nothing wrong, right? There's really nothing wrong. Again, the market had a really big run and the market's just pulling back, right? You have four straight uh, weeks of losses, right? But again, be big, beautiful, healthy, right? Healthy so far, uh, consolidation of the NASDAQ 100. Again, we don't look at the weekly time frame when I trade, um, I need to see, well, what's gonna happen next? Okay, what's gonna happen next and how can I take advantage of it? So if you are looking at a lot of the groups, uh, especially within uh, the NASDAQ, you see there's a, lot of, there's a lot of red flags. Okay, first of all, semiconductors have been absolutely destroyed. Okay, uh, the semis have been destroyed. Again, why? Well, they have exposure, a lot of them, probably most of them, uh, or I could even say all of them uh, have exposure to China, right? So the Chinese headline, the Chinese trade is going to affect them. So they're getting hit, right? You have stocks like Alibaba who are directly in the crosshairs of, well, the China trade, they're getting hit, you know, Baidu uh, as well. Uh, but again, the most important part, what, I, what I'm seeing is right now, that the days that we are supposed to rally, we have these big reversals uh, into the close, those are the days that are being faded. And the more times that you are watching a market that gets faded after um, kind of a technical reversal, okay, the more red flags you're getting. So when you're looking at the NASDAQ 100 right now, okay, and you say to yourself, well, the NASDAQ held, the NASDAQ held, the NASDAQ held, right? That 178 level, it, keep not, it kept on reclaiming, because again, if you guys remember the week before, I said this 178 headline, this 178 area will be the line in the sand, and it keeps on reclaiming. The problem with that, and this is kind of how we use, you know, we use technical analysis and we use our eyeballs, as the, the, the greatest indicator. And this is, again, why I tell the new trader, even if you know what the hell you're looking at, keep on looking at charts because eventually you're going to see a similarity, right? Here's a rejection, right? We went lower. Here's a rejection. We went lower. And look what happened on Friday, right? We rallied up, rallied up to the five-day moving average again for, the, for all you guys who are not, uh, who have been not following me for a while uh, or haven't followed me ever. The five-day for me is a very, very important uh, study. Okay. And a lot of people don't use it. I do. Uh, for me, the five day moving average represents the shortest term bias you can possibly have. And if you look again, if you look just using the naked eye test, okay, sometimes you don't need to, to complicate things on technical analysis. But when you're looking at the naked eye test, you can see the last time what happened when the market, when the NASDAQ 100 hit the five day, faded, hit the five day, faded hit the five day, faded. So when you're looking at the measured potential, what could happen for this week, and you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply, well, then you have to believe in the theory that stocks trade in demand to demand. So again, here's demand, here's demand, here's demand, and here's demand. So what we're looking for going into this week is a negative bias, okay? There's nothing, you know, there's nothing really that, you, that screams at you bull market run for this week. Again, anything can happen, but again, Going into every single week, you need to have a bias, you need to have a game plan, and you need to wait for the confirmation for everything to play out. Because if you don't, you are guessing. We're not in the guessing business, we're in the collecting data and confirmation business. So going into this week, I'm sell biased, okay? I'm sell biased. Doesn't mean I won't buy stocks, it means I am sell biased. And now we are looking at a sneaky area again, this 177.94 initial area for an intermediate pivot, but this number here 
this 177 level will really be the line in the sand because 177 then will go to 176 and then 174 and change before ultimately if the market really, really gets aggressive and fear kicks in, can go all the way down here to 172. Again, the PS60 theory says supply to supply, to demand, to demand, to demand, to demand. Again, no guessworks, only these silly little lines. Uh, the, a lot of new traders ask, well, Dan, why do you have all these silly little lines? No reason, carry on. So really good week of trading, okay? Really, really good week of trading. Um, Tesla, I mean, what can you say? Um, just an absolute phenomenal week of Tesla. And again, it breaks my heart. It, it really does. I'm a fan of Elon. I want him to succeed. I love the car. I think it's a gorgeous car. But now things are finally catching up. Fundamentals are finally catching up. And the problem is, um, well, the problem is Wall Street is starting to lose faith. And when Wall Street starts to lose faith, the price action becomes one way. And now we're seeing a pretty violent move. And you know, I, the fact that we trade Tesla every, I mean, literally every day in the live webinar, and again, it doesn't make a difference to me, long, short, as long as it's a bias and confirmation, I'll trade it. But I asked, you know, I asked a pretty, pretty basic question. I mean, how, like when does fear kick into the stock? All right? And it's a very, very basic question because the stock has gone from just January, right? Where we're we? We're in May. So January, February, March, April, May. This, talking about five months, the stock has gone from 352 to, to 190. When does the fear actually kick in? And the problem is a lot of traders, um, well, actually a lot of investors, they're kind of in denial. Okay. And the scariest thing is to be an investor in denial. So for example, when the internet bubble popped, okay, uh, people were talking about, well, WorldCom just went from 150, you know, 150 to one to 100. Oh, there's no way it's going to break 100. Oh, man, WorldCom just went to 75. There's no way it's going to go to 50. No way. 25? 25 is a steal. There's no way it's going to go lower than that. Next thing you know, one of the biggest frauds in history in the stock goes to zero. Again, not saying that about Tesla. Just making an example. Okay, just making examples. So, again, I'm not saying that. The problem is when you're in prayer and hold and buy the dip and all that good stuff and you are a believer in the company, okay, instead of believing in technical analysis, you are unfortunately in God's hands. And like I've said for many, many updates, God, I promise you, does not care about your position. Okay, there's, there's famine, uh, there's famine, there's poverty, there's kids born uh, every day with disease. God does not care about your position. Okay, and the problem with trading versus investing, yes, you could be in a position for five years and everything is great. The problem is you can be in the wrong position for five years, and unfortunately, your capital gets depleted uh, very, very quickly. So obviously, I am sell biased on Tesla. Um, it doesn't mean, right? It doesn't mean I won't trade it for the long side. If you guys remember, if you follow, especially all you guys who follow me on Twitter, and when I put these pivots in every single day, um, four out of the five days we were sell biased. I think it was on Thursday that we caught a really aggressive move to the upside once it trapped some shorts on the bottom uh, and had a really, really big blow. So for me, it doesn't make a difference which way the wind blows, but there's definitely going to be a huge line in the sand. We'll talk about that uh, in a second. A very, very aggressive day on Friday. Um, very, very aggressive day on Friday. Again, Fridays of now, uh, probably one of my favorite days of the week. I, again, maybe it's because... Uh, options expire and the people are willing to put heavier speculation bets on on very heavy uh, popular names. Maybe that's the case, but whatever the case is, Fridays have become really, really good. Okay. Can't describe it. They understand why, but it's become, becoming one of my favorite days uh, of the week. And I always go into Friday saying, well, I don't know how much I'm going to trade. I'm going to take it easy. And the next thing you know, I'm trading aggressively. Um, so Friday, again, guys, again, for all you guys watching, this is the stock twits feed. It's exactly the same thing as the Twitter feed. I just have this thing up. Uh, again, there, there's no cherry picking. Every pivot, every pivot is what we have. There's no omitting pivots. These are the pivots for the day. Okay, these are the pivots for the day. Win, lose, or draw. These are the pivots of the day. And Friday uh, was incredibly aggressive. And let's talk about it. Okay, so Boeing uh, was the per first pivot of the day, nine o'clock in the morning. I usually try to put these uh, pivots in somewhere around between nine and nine ten. Uh, Eastern time, right before the you know, right before the open, so everybody has a chance to trade with them, whatever they want. So Boeing, okay, three fifty eight needs to build. Uh, here is the Boeing pivot. 
right? Here is the Boeing pivot right over here. Uh, 358, if you, you can see how it stopped right on supply. This candle confirmed supply and it absolutely exploded, went up to like 362, 361 and a half, 362. So big, big move on Boeing. Uh, Netflix only went up like a dollar and change. Uh, 357.70, 358 needs to build. And basically shows you how a lot of these names are just, just they're not strong enough to sustain a big move. So here is the 357.80, uh, 358 level. Uh, went up to eh, 359.40. But again, cash flow is cash flow if you did take it. I didn't take this trade. Uh, if you did take this trade, good job there. Um, Roku, Roku. I mean, what are you going to say? What a monster, right, guys? I mean, what an absolute monster. You saw some call buying the day before on the June 100 calls. Uh, Roku, 91 uh, needs to build. I mean, look at this move on Roku. Just an absolute monster. Here was the 91, right? Here. Again, pre market data, after market data, it all matters. Uh, here's the 91. Once it re re reclaimed 91, just just went it just exploded. Just went exploded, went to 96 and change. Um, beyond, you know, again, like I said, you know, this is not a trade for everybody, but for you aggressive traders, I said, listen, needs to needs to reclaim uh, 84. There's a sh chance for good cash flow, and here's beyond. Uh, here was beyond right over here, right? So look at the top of the channel here. It hits supply uh, at 8380. 8380 is the high here, 8380 is the high here. And again, once it reclaimed 84, again, there's no guessing. You don't need to guess where the stock is going to stop. Stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand. So once it reclaimed the 84, went right to this linear regression line of 8550. Again, is it that move from you know 50 to 80? No. Okay, but that's you know the, the people did catch a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you know, throughout the, the trading world. No, but again, cash flow is cash flow is cash flow. So uh, good job there. Foot Locker got destroyed. Uh, Foot Locker pre-market low, 47 needs to, if it builds below, it could flush more. Here is Foot Locker, right? So he put in the low here, Foot Locker at 47, right? Pre-market low. Once it broke the pre-market low, just destruction went down to 43. Um, AR, you know, here's my point. Here's my point of why I trade beta 99% of the times. So I get long this ARY. Okay. And I say this all the time. I would rather I would rather trade beta than anything else because I understand their tendencies. Okay, I get their tendency. All these random stocks, I have no idea, right? So ARY, I buy this thing. Uh, I think I buy it at 20, 2690s, something like that. 2690s and ARY. So I buy this thing at 2690s and it goes up like a dime. Okay, and it just sits there and sits there and sits there and sits there and uh, it just it just doesn't go. It just doesn't go, and I wound up taking like a seven seven eight cent loss. And again, it's not the point of the money. And it goes down like twenty thirty cents, and at the end of the day, it spikes up and it goes to twenty seven thirty. And the point that I always try to tell traders is the reason why I trade Tesla every day, Netflix every day, Nvidia, Amazon, you know, all these all these stocks is I know their tendencies. These random stocks, I have no idea what to expect, right? I have no idea what to expect. So I, I, I say this all the time. A lot of times when I don't trade beta, I'll say a lot of times, for example, I would, you know, I don't even, when I'm green in one of these random trades, I don't want to even be in them because I just don't know what to expect. I, I could be red in Tesla and understand my max value of potential exposure and, and potential gain. So it's so important, at least for me, to keep on trading the same names over and over and over again because when you trade random names, you could have random results. So again, it wasn't the point of even the money. Okay, obviously, it was just the point of putting myself in a position that I have no idea how to stock. If you're still in this thing, God bless. Uh, here is obviously um, again the trade of the day. Uh, here, you know Tesla. I traded it all week. It's just an absolute, just a beast, an absolute beast. Uh, Tesla 194.30, uh, 194. If it builds below, it's going to flush. And here's the here's the pivot on Tesla. Here's the pivot on Tesla right over here. It was the lowest, uh, lowest candle into rising support, which is right here, which is put in a low of 94.30. And once it built below, you know, and I, and I put this out on Twitter, I said there's a puncher's chance it gets to 88. And the reason why I say 88, again, it was the rising support. It just got absolutely destroyed. Uh, I very, very, just really happy with Tesla uh, for the rest of the week. So really happy for the week, uh, pleased for the week. And a lot of you guys did uh, really, really well. Uh, and that's the name of the game. So uh, going through this week, just uh, again, I'm not going to give you guys a lot of ideas because 
Uh, I, I just think a lot of names are very, very skewed, so we'll talk about the, the pivots. But this 86 level, just to give you an example on Tesla, this 86 level on Tesla is going to be a ridiculously important level. Okay, And I, I can't emphasize enough how important this level was. If you guys notice, it bounced off this monthly trend support. Okay, 85, 80, so we'll just call it 86. Any close below 86, okay. Any close, guys. This is this is not something that, it, you know, you, you can you know you, you can argue, okay. This is this is not this is not an argumentative discussion. Any close below 186, and there's a gap all the way down to 141. Just saying. I'm not going to say it's going to go straight down, but it's you know there's a very very good chance the stock will see that. So this 86 pivot on the monthly trend line will be absolutely huge, which obviously I will, I will be watching. Um, I kind of like Checkpoint as well. Uh, Checkpoint had this big gap down, broke a lot of, uh, had a lot of technical damage. Starts reclaiming this 1260, 12 level. I think there's more downside. Um, I kind of like this KTO, KTOS, um, you know, nice move yesterday. Uh, if it starts reclaiming 22, I think the stock can go. Uh, keep an eye on that. Let me see what else I want to give you guys before I let you guys continue your wonderful weekend. Um, I like Intuit. Uh, first close, Intuit above supply. If Intuit starts getting above uh, 58.50, right? Uh, 258.50, 259. I think there's a next leg up. And look, at, and look at BMRN for all you guys who trade BIOS. You're getting a nice little flag developing here. It's starting to curl back up. For aggressive traders, you can start looking at the 89.50 level. But for the daily confirmation, needs to get above that 90, 60, 90, uh, 91 area. So, guys, have an awesome, awesome uh, rest of your day. God bless. Go enjoy your life. Go hug somebody. Again, again guys, we don't get a do-over. It's all about love, and it's all about us. All right, guys? God bless. Be a good human being. I'll see you on the field uh, tomorrow. Take care. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.